Welcome to Oregon. Today we are going to be road tripping all along the Oregon coast, starting from the south and going all the way up to the northern tip of Astoria. So it's going to be a little bit of a challenge because I'm getting a little bit of a late start today. So it's like 9 a.m. already, so a little later than I would have wanted to. So we'll see if we're able to make it all the way up the Oregon coast to Astoria and hit all the spots that I want before it gets dark. Make sure you stay tuned to the end because there's some awesome spots in Astoria that I wanna show you. But for now, we're starting out in the southern coast of Oregon in the Samuel Boardman corridor. And this is like the most picturesque area of all of Oregon coast. So when you see pictures of the Oregon coast, it's likely in this area right here. So this is the spot where all of the rocks and stuff are jutting out of the water. And we're gonna do some exploring here. All right, right now we're at Natural Bridges, which is my personal favorite spot on the Samuel Boardman Corridor, but there's a whole bunch of other really cool pull-offs that you can go and check out and just see the beautiful views. First, we're going to go down on a secret hike and see if we can get down to the rocks down there because it's super cool. All right, let's go see if we can find the trail. This right here is how you know the hike is about to get good. And it says, tension, stay on designated trails, we'll fall into their death. That means the sights and the views are gonna be really good. So we're just gonna walk right on past there. And this is not an endorsement saying that you should hike past these signs, um, nor am I advocating that. Just want to let you know that so just because I am doing something, it's probably a dumb idea and you probably should not do it yourself. So, all right, with that out of the way, let's keep hiking in this super dangerous area. start to see some of the rocks that we'll be seeing. Not a super great view from this viewpoint, but it's gonna get a lot better, trust me. Now we're starting to get a view of the classic Oregon coast with the big rocks jutting out of the water. And we're almost to our spot, so let's go. All right, we're almost there. We just gotta go down this steep root section and then get to that rock over there. And then that'll put us right on top of the bridge. And so yeah, let's just hope we don't die for this part. Yee. At least it's like there's steps you can go down. That's kind of nice. All right, we made it down all the sketchy root parts, and now we are rewarded with this beautiful view of the, the natural bridges right here. Then this is the one major natural bridge that you can see from the uh, overlook up there. So this next part is probably the sketchiest part. So now we need to climb up here to get on top of this bridge. So this is the dangerous part. So this is the definitely do not do this part, but I am gonna do it anyway. And 
now we're on the bridge. Eh. So it's a little bit of a sketchy climb to get up here and I don't really recommend doing the last part unless you're really motivated because that's the part where people have died. Um, so yeah, don't do it. Do as I say, not as I do, but dang, just look at these amazing views that we get while we're up here. This is just insane and one of the coolest places. So. All right, I'm gonna get a couple of drone shots while I'm here um, because you can fly a drone right here. And then I'm gonna make my way back up the hill and we gotta get on to our next destination in our Oregon road trip. All right, let's go. Spent a little bit more time there than I was anticipating, but it's such a beautiful spot and one of my favorite places on all of the Oregon coast. So figure it's worth a little bit of extra time to get some sweet drone shots. But that means I might have to skip out on a few of the other overlooks that I was planning on stopping at, but uh, a lot of them are decently similar to what we just saw. So maybe just stop at one or two. And then depending upon how that goes, we may need to just uh, keep on driving. But it is also getting wicked hot in here. So I am going to take this off and put on some shorts so I don't die of heat. All right, let's go on to the next spot. Keep it rolling. I said I wasn't gonna stop at any of the overlooks, but this one just looked too cool not to. So I think this is the Myers Creek one or something like that. And just check this out, it's pretty cool. It'd be a sweet beach to chill out on. Love all the rock formations just sticking out of the water. There's been a whole bunch of places to just pull out at and chill. If I had more time, I would just chill out in the van in one of those spots, probably park up on the rooftop deck, eat some lunch there. But I think we gotta, gotta keep moving and make sure we stay on track. It's already like 11 o'clock and Astoria is like six hours by driving without stopping. And we have a lot of stops that we need to make on the way. So sadly we gotta keep moving. But when you're on your trip, Definitely don't do this all in one day. Definitely try and break it up into two or three days even, and you'll have a much better time than I am having right now. All right, on to the next stop. At our next stop, this one's just gonna be another quick little overlook and then back in the van. All right. It's like hella windy here. All right, this is, uh, where am I? I'm outside the town of Bandon, or in Bandon on the coast. And uh, this is the wizard rock right over there. So that pointy one that looks like a wizard hat, that's the wizard hat rock. And then you can see some more 
beautiful rock formations. So it's like 12.45 or so now. So Astoria is still like five or six hours away. So it's gonna be pretty close for, for sunset. I'm just gonna see if we make it there in time. It's gonna be close with all the stops that I still need to make too. Yeah, that's five or six hours without uh, stopping anywhere as well. Also, I haven't eaten anything yet today, so... Pretty hungry. Ooh, that's good. So, I have a spot I want to stop for lunch. In... Cool. I have a spot I want to stop for lunch in... saying from this wind so into the van. sorry about that yeah so like I was saying I'm getting pretty hungry haven't eaten anything yet today and but I do have a spot in Newport that I want to stop to eat uh, like a seafood place so that's like two two and a half hours away from now so in order to survive I'm gonna need to eat a little bit of a snack first maybe or maybe I'll just Push through. Current goal is to go from here to Newport, but there is still one more spot I want to stop along the way, and that is in uh, Cape Perpetua. Perpetua. I don't know how, however you say it. But that's where we're gonna head first. So let's hit the road and be on our way. So we're losing daylight, so want to make sure we get to Astoria while the sun is still out. All right, let's go. Here in Bandon, there's also like a uh, super nice golf course. I've never played there, but it's supposed to be like. Wicked nice and pretty expensive, so if you're a golfer, definitely gonna wanna check that out on your road trip. Uh, yeah, so now we got like two hours or so until our next stop. I did get my snack, so I have an apple and a protein shake. Trying to be a little healthy today until I eat a whole bunch of fish later. Um, uh, yeah, so two hours till our next stop at Cape Perpetua. I. If I had more time, I would make some other stops too at some of the other lookouts. And there's a like a sea lion's cave that would be cool, uh, but I don't think I'm gonna have time for that today. Um, oh, by the way, if you want to see like a map or of any of these stops that I'm going to or have a road trip planned, um, I have a free travel map that I'll put a link for in the description that has all of my favorite locations and destinations. Uh, all around the US and all around the world, and you can grab that for free. Um, but yeah, so next, let's start heading towards Cape Perpetua. And about two hours we'll be there, so I need my snack, a quick stop there, and then hopefully get a little late lunch in Newport after that. All right, back on the road. Another fun two hour stint of driving, but we made it to our next stop at Cape Perpetua. So from here, I'll show you in a second, but there's a big overlook on the mountain hill thing behind me, but we are actually walking down to the beach area. It's more well, like lava rock type stuff than beach um, to something called Thor's Well. And in, what that basically is, it's like a hole in the rocks where when waves come in, water like comes up and shoots up and spouts out, out of the uh, out of the well, really. So I'm not sure if we're at the right tide for it. Maybe, oh, I think I just saw it go, actually. So we'll see it when we get down there. And yeah, so this is just one of the other sites you can see on the Oregon coast. It's been pretty much just uh, straight driving since our last stop to try and make up some time. So it's now almost 3.30. Uh, so it's gonna be close for for time. Well, I was not sure if we'll make it or not, but especially it depends how long uh, food takes at the next stop. Because I am getting quite hungry. That apple and the protein shake wasn't quite enough for a snack, but I don't know. It's time for food though. All right, let's walk on down to the well and take a look. That up there is where you can get to the Perpetua Overlook. Uh, you do have like a path or a road you can drive all the way up there and to get to the Overlook. I'm not gonna do that today just for time-wise, but I'll overlay some footage now when I was there last time so you can see what that will look like. All right, let's see if we can get closer to the well, but take the path down there.
There was. See it? You can see water come up and out. I don't really want to get any closer. So you just saw it right there behind me. I don't really want to get any closer though, because it keeps getting big waves splashing up and over, and I'm not in the mood to get drenched at the moment. But let's try and get a nice zoom shot in there so you can see the waves and the, the water coming and splashing up through, because it's, it's pretty cool. good chance I'm gonna get wet though. I can look down and see the hole right in there. Oh, we got one coming? Maybe. Let's wait a second and see if we can get something. Over there. Hey! There we go. Oh, nice. It's so windy here. I was gonna take out the drone and get some drone shots, but I feel like it's too windy to keep it in one place and it'll probably also get wet down here, so. Woo. All right, I'm starting to get a little, oh, I'm starting to get a wet one. All right, I'm getting wet, so now I'm gonna head back up now that I got the shot. All right, see you back up there, top. Oh, man. Oh, yeah, you can probably see the, see the splattering on my shirt, but. Worth it. That was pretty sick. Oh. Right, definitely worth the shot. It's pretty refreshing too. Well, felt kind of nice. It's pretty warm out. That breeze makes it a little chilly though. Definitely worth it. Pretty cool stop, eh? So I have stopped here before, like most of the places on this trip, and I actually slept and parked the van right here, right next to the road. And it was a pretty sweet place to sleep, falling asleep to the sound of the waves crashing, and you just wake up to the sunrise, or, or well after sunrise in my case, and you can just like walk down there and chill at the beach and take a look at the, the geyser, or I think it's technically called an ocean geyser, or a spouting horn from the sign I just read. I'm not making that one up. Um, and yeah, so it's really nice when it's at high tide, which I think it is right now, based upon the waves and the water level. And that's when you get like the most water shooting out of the spout. So pretty cool, definitely worth a stop on your Oregon road trip. So next, I think we finally get to eat. So I'm about an hour or so away from Newport. So I think that's our next stop. And I have two different seafood restaurants there. So we're gonna take a stop in at both and see which one we're, we're feeling for the day. All right. On that note, let's head out and hit the road again. I made it to Newport and now we're going to check out local ocean seafood. So this is a wicked good restaurant like right on the bay, right on the, like the, the harbor like this right here. Uh, but they can be pretty busy sometimes. So it is almost five now. So hopefully it's not too bad. Otherwise if it's too busy, I'll have to go to a, a different seafood shop down the road. Uh, so yeah, we'll go see how it is because I'm running close on time. It's five o'clock now, and I'm still like three hours from Astoria. So oh, these next ones are gonna have to be be real quick. All right, I don't know if we're gonna make it there before sunset. If I still want to hit all the spots, because I still want to hit like Depot Bay, um, and the Tillamook Creamery, Cannon Beach, and then some spots in Astoria. So it's like four places. We might have to drop one. So we'll see what happens. All right, time to get some fish. Look 
like it. Luckily, it was early enough that there was no way to was able to get a table. And went with the rockfish tacos this time. So, look pretty good. Hopefully, they're pretty good. Bon appetit. Rockfish is so tender, so light. Mm. That's delicious. I don't think they make anything bad here, so if you're coming through Newport or on an Oregon Coast road trip, definitely gotta check out local ocean seafood for sure. Alright, I'm gonna finish eating these up and then we gotta get back on the road real quick. Oh, those are so good. Maybe some of the best fish tacos I've ever had. Uh, they were so much flavor. I really wanted to get some something else. Um, I wanted to get like one of the other fish dishes too to try that, but I just didn't have enough time, obviously. Uh, Cause it's like almost 5.30 now, so I did get in and out decently quick, but now I've still gotta go real fast. So uh, next I wanted to stop at Depot Bay, but I don't think that I have time for that now, because um, it's like the the whale watching capital of the Oregon coast. But I don't think we have time anymore, so I think I'm headed right to Cape Kiwanda, which is like a cool sea giant sand dune hill mountain thing. So yeah, I think that's where we're headed now. So I've got to go back to the van and you know, let's race there. This is the first time that I'm starting to doubt that I might get to a story of first sunset. It's gonna be cutting it close because I'm still like three hours away and it's 5.30 now. I still have like a few more stops to make. I don't know. I'm not sure if we're gonna make it or not. We'll do our best. Uh, fill it up with uh, fall unleaded. Would you like a receipt? Ah, uh, no receipt. That's okay. Cool. Thank you. Okay, I forgot this about Oregon, where the gas stations are full service, so you don't get out of the car to fill up your gas, which I don't like. It's like I don't need you pumping my gas. But it just it feels so weird, like not getting out of the car to pump my own gas. I don't know. I feel like I can do it faster than waiting for you to come and do it. I don't know. Some, some places do have like self-service where you can do it yourself or sometimes I just get out in the car and I insist. But I don't, know, it, it, I don't know. Every time it wears me out, it's not my favorite. What do you think? All right, so got about an hour of driving now until we get to Cape Kiwanda. So that'll put us there a little before seven. So we'll go there. Then I think I want to try and hit, still hit Tillamook, Cannon Beach, Seaside and Astoria. So I don't know if we're gonna get all of those by sunset. We'll see what happens. We might have to call it and do sunset at Cannon Beach, which would still be still be a good time. So I don't know. This is the first time like I said, like I'm doubting if we're gonna we're gonna make it or not. It's gonna be very close. The next couple stops are just gonna have to be super quick if we wanna make it. Alright, just gonna wait for this gas to get finished, and we should be good. All right, perfect. Thanks so much. Yep, now I'm going on my break. All right, nice. You have a great day, man.
All right, made it to Cape Kiwanda, our next stop on the road trip. It's getting a little late. It's like seven o'clock right now. So it's gonna be really close, but this is a pretty sick spot though. So we've got a beautiful beach, giant rock out in the ocean like that. So take a look at the big rock. That's kind of like Haystack Rock, but not exactly. And then if we keep looking over here, Got a nice big sand dune. So we're gonna go try and climb up that because that's what you do at Cape Kiwanda. It's pretty windy. I don't know if you can really hear me or if this wind is super annoying, but I'm going to climb the dune. So I'll see you up at the top. All the way up there. I don't know if it's as big as it looks in real life as it is on camera because of the GoPro effect, but it's pretty high. So let's start climbing. So it looks like that's the top of the dune up there, but I just saw this other area back here that like goes out that way. So we're gonna take a look and see what's over here first before we head back towards the dune. Let's go exploring, see what we can find. This is one of the fun things about living in the van and kind of setting your own schedule is you just kind of go exploring and you find some hidden gems like this. You don't know what's gonna be over here. And so wanna go exploring? Yeah, sure, why not? Let's do it. So, let's see what we can find up at the top of this ridge over here. Big rock and some more rocks. Here, take a look. We got that big one that's kind of like Haystack, but not exactly Haystack. Another platform over there. And if we come this way, we can see that the trail actually keeps going. I didn't notice this before, but if you keep going past the dune, you get some more rocks that you can explore over there. Definitely a cool area. It's super unique, just all the differences along the Oregon coast. So we started off in the south coast with a bunch of the big rocks that you saw um, at like the Natural Bridges and Samuel Boardman Corridor. And then now it's like beach beach kind of things and we'll get more beach a little bit later. Yeah, it's just, it's beautiful. It's absolutely, absolutely worth the road trip if you've never done one before, especially in a van. If you have a van, definitely take take the van for a spin around the Oregon coast. Or if you don't have a van, you can always rent one. Uh, I usually recommend outdoorsy if you have like a, uh, if you wanna do a van trip kind of like this or at any national park kind of thing. So definitely worth it for the experience. Do it in more than one day they like me though. Do like at least two or three days to see everything because I've been kind of rushed and the jury is still out if we're gonna hit everything. All right, so this is beautiful, but I think we still need to finish climbing to the top of the dune. Let's go.
this place is pretty sick. I'm definitely glad that I stopped at this spot. It's hella windy up here, just like every other place on the Oregon coast, but... Oh, this is sick. Check this out. It's insane. Good views, but now it's time for the real reason I came up here, to run down the dune as fast as I can. Let's go. Oh man, that was way more fun than it should have been. I was gonna stop halfway down and get some different like video angles, but I was just going so freaking fast, I couldn't stop. Dang, that was so fun. 10 out of 10 recommend Cape Kiwanda and running as fast as you can down the dune. That was so sick. I wish I had a like a sandboard or a pair of sand skis or something like that. That would have been amazing. I'll definitely have to rent one of those when I go to uh, go to Peru later this year. Got uh, Pocachina, I think that's what it's called. Cause it's anything like that and I'm assuming it's even bigger and better than that. Oh, amazing. All right, time to hit the next stop now. So keep you on to check. Next is gonna be Tillamook Creamery. I did just see that they close at six though. And granted that it's, I don't even know, 7.30 or something like that now. Um, I don't think we're gonna make it there, which is a shame, but because they got really good ice cream and free cheese and cheese making tours there, so definitely add it on the list and it's right on um, Highway 1 on the Oregon Coast Highway, so definitely add that to your list when you're doing your Oregon road trip. I wish I could do it this time, but I did it last time, so maybe I'll interlay some uh, B-roll footage or some shots from when I was there last time, but anywho, next going to Cannon Beach. So it's getting pretty close to sunset now. I don't know if we're gonna make it or not. It's gonna be gonna be really close. Uh, we might be there just in time to catch sunset at Haystack Rock or at Cannon Beach. We're gonna be pushing it. I think it's like an hour and a half away or something like that. So this should be, or this would, is probably gonna be the final stretch for today because it's not looking like we're gonna make it all the way to Astoria, but you never know, maybe we'll save that for tomorrow or next day's vlog, so make sure you subscribe if you wanna see that and see, see some more. But in other news, let's go and see if we can make it to Cannon Beach for sunset. All right, let's go. Just past the Tillamook Creamery, uh, but it's 8.45 right now, so it is definitely closed. Sad, could have gone for some ice cream or some free cheese today. It's a great song. But, oh well, I think this just definitely proves you should not do the Oregon road trip in one day. Because even though I was like stopping to film at a lot of places, you're still gonna be rushed in most of these things. So it's like 8.45 right now, and I'm got like 45 more minutes or so to Cannon Beach. Um, the sun is still up quite a bit, so. Uh, you can see over there, it's like getting to sunset time, but it's still decently high in the sky because obviously I'm on the Pacific coast, so when I get to the beach, it's gonna be like the most time as possible. Also, I'm decently high far north. I didn't check what time sunset is at, but probably sometime between, by the looks of it, like 
sometime between 9 and 10. Uh, she was supposed to get there at 9.30, so it could, could work, could not work. It's gonna be close no matter what, so. Just got like 45 minutes of listening to my book, and then we'll be there. So a lot of times people ask what I do in the van on these long road trips, if I like listen to music or audiobooks or podcasts or whatever. Uh, the, the answer is all of the above. So a lot of times I'll do an audiobook or a podcast. Right now I'm listening to Day Trading Attention by Gary Vee, which is about like attention and social media type stuff. Uh, so side, bar, side, side note in my van, I installed this other nice big screen so I can actually you know see my map and everything with Apple CarPlay. So I don't have like the, just the tiny screen that comes in the ProMaster. Anyway, yeah, Day Trading Attention by Gary Vee. It's by like or about social media stuff because you know I'm on social media so he's a big social media guy so yeah so that's one thing I do I like a lot of business and finance and money type podcasts and books so all the boring stuff sadly but I don't know I think it's interesting I like it it makes sense for what I do now being content and marketing and stuff so it works works but then a lot, I do listen to a lot of music on long drives too especially if it's later at night and I need to stay awake. I'll have a little mini car karaoke session by myself. Either that or I'll listen to a comedy podcast, like a, a stand-up comedian or like the Conan O'Brien and Needs a Friend podcast or something like that. So that's my like usual rotation of what I listen to on long road trips. So, but yeah, just about 45 minutes left to get to Cannon Beach. We just went into the like a little foresty area so it got a little bit dark there. Jury's still out if we're gonna make it or not, so it's gonna be close. It's gonna be close. Alright, we get beautiful views though. Can you check this out? Dang. We get the water and the sunset right there and the little window. Can't say that the Oregon coast is an absolutely gorgeous drive. Here we go. Final stretch. Let's go. Well, as you can see, we did not make it for sunset. Missed it by probably like 20 or 30 minutes or so, but it's still pretty cool. There's the big rock. So that's Haystack Rock at Canyon Beach, the famous one here. And definitely still recommend coming to Canyon Beach. It's better at sunset or when you can actually see, but it's kind of a vibe at night. You can have campfires on the beach. Those people over there have some campfires. So it's pretty nice. So definitely see now we have no chance to make it to Astoria by sunset because it's still like an hour, hour and a half away, which is a bummer because that's where they filmed the Goonies. So I wanted to go to the Goonies house. And then there's also a cool shipwreck thing on one of the beaches there that I wanted to go see. Um, but I guess we'll just have to do that tomorrow. So subscribe if you want to see that and not miss that video. Other than that, if you want to get my map of all of the places that I went to today and all my favorite locations all across the world for food, nature, hiking, accommodations, literally everything, you can get that for free in the description below. Uh, other than that, thanks for coming along this road trip challenge journey along the Oregon coast. I had a great time. It was a bit of a rush at times to try and make it here, but we made it. We didn't complete it, but I still had a great day. All right, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.